As we have seen on the finished project, our drop-down is not going to be perpetually open as it is right now. We are going to hide it by default and then only reveal it when the user hovers on one of the nav items that has a drop-down. So when they hover on the item, we are going to reveal the drop-down using this animation effect where the, the drop-down seems to slide up from somewhere below here. And now before we apply that animation effect, there is one aspect of the design of the drop-down that we left out and that is to uh, apply this line that separates the items in the navbar. So let us add those borders. So back in our CSS code, I'm going to select the CSS selector for the drop-down and then I'll pick each of the list items within it and I'll give it a border bottom of one pixel solid this color that I prepared in the background. If we refresh our browser, the lines, you are going to notice that the lines appear, but unlike in the finished project, these lines are extending the entire width of the drop down. Uh, this is fine, you can leave it like this if you want, but just to be, uh, just to follow exactly what we have on the finished project, I'm going to make these lines uh, stop somewhere around the same level where the text begins. And in order to do this, uh, we are going to use the after sudo class. And then we'll comment this for now, and then we'll do content and give it empty string. And then for now, let's just give it a red border. Back to our browser, refresh, and you see that the after element is being added at the beginning of the end of a list item. Now, we can make this to span the entire width of the item by making it a block element. Remember, a block element takes up the entire width that is available to it. So if you just do display block, you will see these borders extending the entire width. And now since this is a block level element, we can now assign a margin to it. So we'll just do margin at the top of zero pixels and then left and right 16 pixels. And this will give that space that we talked about. If you know, if you look at these margins, you will notice that they are much thicker than we'd want. But these ones are a lot lighter. So we are just going to make it a border bottom instead of border all round. And then we make sure we change the color to what we prepared earlier, to what I prepared for the finished project. So back to our browser, refresh. Okay, the lines are now uh, almost the same as what we see, basically the same as what we see on the finished project. I don't want the last element to have a line under it. So what I will do is I'm just going to select the last list item, last child, and then I'll select the after for that particular child and display none. So when I do this, it's not going to display uh, the line for the last element. I'm removing that line because it kind of looks, uh, looks a bit odd to have it. Okay, so it has been removed and our browser, or rather, our drop-down is the same, looks the same as what we see on the finished project. So we can proceed to animate it. Now, animations in CSS can be a bit tricky and sometimes even intimidating. So whenever I am about to animate an object, I usually ask myself one simple question to make the process a little bit easier. I ask myself, what are the properties of the object at the beginning of the animation and what are the properties of that object at the end of the animation or how do the properties uh, change over time because an animation is basically a certain change in properties over a brief period of time usually less than half a second so if you look at the finished project and um, we'll notice that the properties the properties changing are one, the opacity, because the drop down starts from totally invisible to totally visible. So the opacity changes from zero to one. 
The second property that changes is the displacement or what we call in CSS the transform property. So the drop down emerges from about 35 pixels below its normal position and then uh, slides up to this current position when it is open. So the two properties are opacity and the displacement or the transform property. So let us start with the properties at the beginning of the animation. So I'm going to go to our drop down selector and at the beginning we are going to make sure this drop down selector is about let's say transform in the y axis about 35 pixels to the south of where it currently is. So if we refresh okay you see it come down about 35 pixels. Okay, the next one is the opacity. I'm just going to give it opacity of zero. Refresh, it will disappear. Just to prove to you that it is still there, I'm just going to give it a 0 0.4 opacity so that you can see it faded. Okay, so yeah, we know for sure that it is invisible and it is about 35 pixels south. Now, if you attempt to hover on it, you can see our mouse pointer is indicating as if it is clickable, which means this thing is it is uh, not it is not visible, but it is still occupying this space. So if you add another element on the page, we will not be able to click on that element even when the drop down is closed because it will still be here and it will still be covering everything under it. So what we need to do in this particular case is we'll give it a Z index of let's say negative one big number. And when we say negative, uh, when we give it a negative Z index, we are basically telling it to go under the page as in it should go um, every other element with a higher Z index, basically a positive Z index should appear on top of that element because by default, all elements have a Z index of one. And since one is greater than minus five, it means that this uh, nav bar or this drop down will automatically be displayed under, uh, under most elements. That is why we are still able to click, click here and this card will function even though um, our drop down is hiding here. Okay. So now we are done with the properties at the beginning of the animation. Now what happens at the end of the animation? I'm just going to copy this selector and paste it under here. Now what do we want to happen? What do we want to trigger the animation, the drop down to appear? We want that when the user hovers on a nav item that has a drop down, we should immediately select that drop down and apply these properties to them. These properties that we are going to define now. Okay, so at the end of the animation, we want the opacity to be one. We want it to be visible. So we want opacity to be one. We want the Z index to be five because we want it to be positive and to appear on top of all elements on the page. That is when we have hovered on its uh, nav item. And then we also want the transform to reset back to its normal position, which is zero. Remember the 35 pixels transform was what pushed it down uh, 35 pixels below its uh, nav item. So we want to bring it back when the user has hovered. And then the last thing we want to do is the timing. We want to we want these properties to transition. All here represents all these three properties to change over a period of a quarter of a second. And then we usually do ease in out or something like that. But I have prepared a timing function that is a little bit more elaborate. So I have just pasted it. Um, you can pause the video and copy it and I'm going to show you how to get this function in a few uh, minutes. So if you refresh our page now and then you hover, 
You notice now that our drop down is fully functioning. Okay, as for the timing function, uh, you can just search for CSS timing function generator and you look for cubicbezier.com and then here you can vary the properties and then you preview how they are going to change over time and you can even change the uh, time and see how it works and then when you are satisfied with the result you can just click copy and you'll be good to go it's going to look look something like what i just uh, added here yeah. all right so that is it uh that's it for this video in the next video we're going to proceed to work on the navigation bar to make it responsive and so on